Thank you very much for a kind introduction. My name is Takashina. The, so the title is The History of Art Foretells the Future. A great poet and a novelist, Victor Hugo from France, he wrote, written in Notre Dame de Paris, 1482. That's the novel that he wrote. There is an odd chapter that says, this will kill that. It's Paris, and it's a Notre Dame Cathedral, and uh, there is a residence beside that, and there is a young bishop would be placing his hand on a book on a table and will say this. And after that, he's going to be pointing to a cathedral outside of the window and say that, and will be saying this will kill that, meaning uh, that the book will kill the cathedral. It's 1482. The setting is in 1482. It's a time when a new technology came to be, which was the printing technology. And there was a mass production of books, now possible. And with these uh, newly arrived books, whether it to be the teachings of God uh, and the uh, education will be conducted through books. And uh, because of that, in the Middle Ages, uh, people went to the church in order to get that. But the book will be replacing that, which means that the books will kill the cathedral. And it is true that in the Middle Ages, uh, there were a lot of rules filled by the church. But with these uh, printing materials, the books uh, would replace uh, the works that were conducted by the churches back then. But that's not the only thing that's taken away. The art world uh, that were held, helmed by the church, would also be replaced. In the Middle Ages, uh, as shown in a lot of the illuminated manuscripts, uh, they told about the teachings of God, but it was also very much decorated, and it was a piece of work of art in itself. And uh, back then, uh, Federico de Montefeltro, the, uh, the Duke of Urban, who was known as a bibliophile, said uh, that the printed books were ugly, and therefore they are not going to be included in the collection um, in his library. Uh, the text uh, that would be a world that will be telling uh, the meaning and form and color which is used in order to depict the art, they have completely been separated. Michel Foucault, a thinker in France, He wrote an article about uh, this is not a pipe by René Magritte. He said something like this. The Western and European art in the 15th century to the 20th century have been ruled by plastic representation and linguistic reference. So these were the two principles that ruled the Western art. And he also uh, stated that these two systems can neither merge nor intersect. So let's take a look at the Middle Age uh, transcription. As you can see, the image and the text are unified and merged as one, as a work of art. Especially if we take a look at the title page, the forms of the text and the words are well leveraged on in order to portray the significance or the definitions. Now, for example, the I and the P, P I P R I N. And so this is the first word of the uh, book of Johannes. So these uh, text and the meaning and image are all merged as one. By the 
printing world that came to be in the 15th century, this uh, took away these uh, types of merged world. And after that, the piece of work, whether it be art and the uh, creators have uh, tried to be able to merge uh, the image and the text. Uh, this came to be in the 19th century, and uh, it is uh, the uh, the Moxon uh, Tennyson poetry collection. So th he have uh, uh, tried to be able to uh, merge uh, the poetry or the text and the image. And let's take a look at what happened inside. And uh, this is the Lady of Shallot. The this is the illustration by Holman Hunt, William Holman Hunt. And this is the Dante Gabriel Rossetti also have uh, con illustrated uh, this as well. So it is true that the text and image reside on the same page, but the text portion and the image portion, uh, which is uh, the illustration or the printed art, it is two separate world. They are completely separated. So compared to the transcription of the Middle Ages, it's tasteless. Going on to William Morris, they have used a the Gothic, uh, the Middle Age Gothic uh, transcription, and he tried to be able to revive the beauty of that. And uh, this is a uh, Geoffrey Chaucer's uh, collection of poetry, but in U UK, and you will be able to see the illustrations and the words or the text are all residing in one page. And it is true that here the image and the text is much better merged. But still this portion, the text portion, and the words within the page, it's still belonging to a different world, even if it is on the same page. The world of imagery is taken away from text as art. And uh, with only an image, we'll be able to provide uh, for a greater narratives. And uh, this is in Rome. It's uh, Sistine Chapel. And uh, the ceiling art, or the, the Last Judgment large mural, Michelangelo did all of this by himself, meaning that, that he used his arm, hand, in order to create this piece of art. And also, this is a biblical narrative. There is no text uh, to portray the narratives. It's just about image. With only the image, through the imagination of a great artist, it gave a birth uh, to the definition and the narrative. Uh, with just an image, this world is created. To uh, decorating an architecture by the one artist is this was a great example of that in the twentieth century. And this is in the South France is in. Matisse is uh, the chapel of rosary in Vence, France. There is a stained glass and a mural in uh, this chapel. And with this, uh, Matisse has been able to create a great artistic space. It's an image. Of course, uh, there will be a draftsmanship in order to express forms. And there is a stained glass designed by Matisse. Uh, will be able to incorporate colored light. So draftsmanship and the colored light, they are all unified. And because of this being a chapel, uh, we will also be able to have a very simple, beautiful altar. And these are all united to form a religious space. And this is a, it was all done by form and color texts are not used here. Within the 21st century artist, he 
what Michel Foucault has said that the text and the image will never be merged, but Matisse tried to be able to merge this. Now, when he had worked on the advances of chapel, he has shown his works by his hand. And also, the, this is uh, the Matisse's uh, Florage de Amour. So the poetry and the art is well united on one page. The image, the world of image. And uh, this one is a draftsmanship. And uh, the text by that is separated. And let's take a look at the title page. We have the Flores de Amour de Ronsard. You will be able to see a text, texted title. And uh, there is also a well-designed picture associated with that. So it, the text and the image is residing on the same page, but it is uh, belonging to a different world. And he, Matisse, tried uh, to be able to merge this again. And uh, says, uh, within the uh, poetic collection of Charles d'Orléans, on the title page, we'll be able to, to see the portrait and text. Uh, but he wrote this. It's a handwritten word. So the world of text and the world of image is now united. And let's take a look at the pages inside. The poet poems itself also are handwritten, hand transcripted. And it also incorporates design as well. So the lines for the text matches uh, the designs. The, we have the naked woman who have been able to see that there is a unified line work here. And uh, jazz, uh, which is a, a famous work collection and by Matisse, which signifies that uh, we'll be able to see a narrative included in uh, these uh, series of art. And the title Jazz, of course, is handwritten by Matisse. And the image depicted here, it's not just about draftmen, but he also used cutouts. There is a work called Circus, and there would be the words as well. This is included in a series called Jazz. And you'll be able to see the forms and the colors and the text. Also, there would be participating as a form of art. The Michel Foucault said that the world of text and the world of image will completely be separated. But these two worlds actually has been well integrated into one works of art in order to create a merged world. In a Western art, it is true that the print came, became a new technology and that provided greater benefits, whether it be education or the news and communications. Print has been able to fulfill many roles. But at the same time, the art and the world of image were separated away, which depicts the aesthetics of human beings. So taking 300 years to 400 years, the artists have been able to recreate a world in which these two are reunited. And when we take a look at these history, in retrospect, the expression and the communication functionality, the, which is fulfilled by words, how would we be able to merge these into one world? We have been able to see how this happened uh, by looking back in the Western art. Uh, let's take a look at the art outside of the Western world. It is a, there is a world where that separation did not exist, like Foucault said. For example, in Japan, 
the text and the image always formulated the one world. It was something completely different, but they were all residing in the same page, and it is being merged in order to depict the one world. And this uh, is the the fan paper album of Hokekyo Sutra. And as you can see, you will be able to see the mode of life. We have the buildings, we have the children, we have women working. So this is the mode of life. And on top of this, you will be able to see the Lotus Sutra words written. It seems like uh, these uh, two worlds are separated, uh, but as a piece of a formulated uh, world of art, it is united. The words, well, the kanjis, aesthetics, and also hiragana, which is specific to Japan, uh, which is fluid, they have the formulative power. Uh, this is another example of that. This is in the 17th century. This tradition continued going into the 17th century in, in the Edo era after that, and also in the Muromachi era before that. Uh, it, all of these uh, historical pieces show this emerged world. One of the example of this is the uh, Tawaraya Sodatsu wrote uh, the art, and on top of that, Honwami Koetsu wrote the text or a poem. And this is a scroll. So it is a very long piece of work. This is a part of that long scroll. And have uh, used the gold background. And on top of that gold background, we have been able to use the silver to show lines of cranes. Um, it is a very well designed piece of work. And on top of that, Koetsu wrote about Kakinomoto no Hitomaro's poem. So this is all written on top of each other. It's overlapping each other, but there is a, there is a call and response. As a characteristic of Japanese, there will be the kanji characters and the hiragana characters. And so because of the formatively speaking, there is a complex forms and there also is a fluid, a simplified letters which are all unified. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, this is a Kakinamoto no Hitomaro's uh, poem, a waka poem. And you will be able to see the uh, very thin a uh, line uh, which is the she letter and uh, that is a uh, long and that uh, she when the she letters are used it is always used as a long line and uh, that uh, goes uh, through the calls and response uh, with the thin legs of the crane so the formulative uh, power of those letters which also includes a significance or a meaning, and also the meaning of that the drawings are all unified into one and then are all united in order to create and depict one scene. I believe that is a tradition in Japan, and meaning that this has continued from the Middle Ages all the way to the contemporary days. And uh, there is a uh, block of painter, Shiko Munakata, which is a representative artist in the 20th century, and uh, there is a a woodcut print. And Shiko Munakata actually have gone through, uh, going through creating the woodcut print, and they would also go through the, uh, the painting, and this is a uh, woodcut print, so you will be able to have uh, numerous pieces, uh, but the colors are also hand-painted by him. You see the letters here. And he's using katakana and the kanji, uh, the plum smells, and the snow is still there. Uh, when there's still a snow, there's already uh, the fragrant plum smell wafting in the air. Yanagi so it's kokoro uta. This is a poem by him. You'll be able to see the forms, uh, which is the uh, flower of the plums and also the snow in the winter uh, they are these images are uni united into one so this is a world that depicts uh, both 
And uh, there are numerous works by Munakata uh, with a similar theme, and uh, many other artists have done this as well. So the the possibility of the expression by human, we will be able to learn from the past works as well. When we think about what the future will be for the art, I will not be able to become a prophet. But no matter the methodology, there will always be the unique imagination of the artist like uh, Michelangelo. And there would also be the rich aesthetics that is nurtured by the past tradition. And also the hand craftsmanship uh, that will create that. Of course, uh, uh, CG is possible through new technologies in the 21st century, but we need the imagination and hand craftsmanship, which will give birth to richness. And the aesthetics uh, that's based on a tradition I believe uh, merging these uh, two into one uh, will give birth uh, to a great piece of art in the future, and I hope uh, that will be real. Thank you very much.